Good morning or good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Yesterday, there was some difficulty with the um, sound and I was having a whole bomb of study by myself. So I promised that I would do it today so that we are on track for every Friday. And so that is what we are doing. So if you just give me one second, I want to put up the scriptures that we are going through on our, um, maybe I can do it here. Let's see. Hmm. We are doing, or we are going into, uh, let's, let's get this here. Let's put that there. And we got 1 Samuel. We're going to 1 Samuel 18, 20 through 29. We are also going into verse 19, 11 through 17. And we are also going to 2 Samuel. Oops. Ecke Samuel 6, 16, ooh, 23. Awesome. Now I'm going to. Hey guys. How is everybody? Remember that the comments are on delay on Facebook because of the, um, I guess the maximum amount of usage, I'm not sure, but it's on delay. So I'm not getting them um, right away. Hmm. I hope that I'm on the right page because I'm not seeing it. Wait. I wanna be tried by fire. And I think Facebook's on delay too because I'm not seeing it. Give me one second while I get this thing in order. And it's not coming up. Um, yep, it's there. Okay. Hey, Phyllis. I'm starting to see the comments now because I'm looking online. Hey, Anna, how are you? Awesome. So I'm going to try to come up in here and shut that down. Okay. So we are going through sec first, fan first Samuel chapter 18, verse 20. And it'll be 19, chapter 19, verse 11 to 17. And then 2 Samuel, chapter 6, verse 16 to 23. Um, I have pinned them up on the comments. So we can go through that and follow along. We are going to talk about, it's called Micaiah. In English, it would be called Michael, which would be weird for a female to be called like that. But it's, it's Mikau. In Hebrew, it's Mikau. And so, Mikau, as you know, was a wife of David. And the name of her, what Mikau stands for, is who is like God. And that is so profound when you read the story that her name is who is like God, and yet she suffered from devotional time with God. She didn't have a devotional lifestyle with God. And so her character is a woman of strong emotion. She was unable to control the important circumstances of her life. She was forcefully separated from two husbands. She lost her father and her brother who were savaged by their enemies. So let's begin. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this time, God. We thank you for your divine 
teachings, Lord. We thank you, God, that you're leading the women into a whole nother place of understanding and building up their confidence, Lord, that they will fulfill their purpose, what you have called them to do, God. There's so much more. There's so much more that needs to be done in a woman's ministry god it's there's just so much more that we have not yet tapped into and lord i just ask god that as we do these studies on fridays and i know it's saturday but remember friday messed up so as we do these studies on fridays god that you will equip us and sharpen our sword lord so that we can be able to fulfill the purposes that you have given us in jesus mighty name amen so Michal was Saul's daughter. So Saul's daughter, Michal, was in love with David. I will give her to him, Saul thought, so that she may be a snare to him. When Saul realized that the Lord was with David and that his daughter, Michal, loved David, Saul became still more afraid of him, and he re remained his enemy for the rest of his days. Michal, David's wife, warned him, if you run, if you don't run for your life tonight, tomorrow you'll be killed by my father. So Michal led David down through a window and he fled and escaped. Then Saul gave his daughter, Michal, David's wife. He gave her over to, I guess, Patel, which we would say Patel, but I was probably Patel or something like that in Hebrew. Then David sent messengers to the son of Saul, demanding, give me my wife, Michal. So the sons of Saul gave orders and had her taken away from her husband. Her husband, however, went with her, weeping behind her all the way. Then Abner said to him, go back home. So he went home. As the ark of the Lord was entering in the city of David, Michal's daughter of Saul watched from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she desired him in her heart. When David brought the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem, after it had been in Philistines' hands for a number of years, and after a faithful earlier attempt to move it, he did so much he did so with a deep sense of awe. The ark was moved only six steps before he stopped and sacrificed a bull and fattened the calf. Then as the priest brought the ark into Jerusalem, David danced before the Lord with all his might. And that's found in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 14. And the people with him shouted and blew trumpets. David's worship of the Lord was neither subdued nor restrained. The Psalms of praise he wrote also reveal his deep love for God, a love so all uncompassing, it could not be contained, but burst forth an extravagant worship sacrifices and offerings were an important part of worship in the old testament times since sin separated the worshiper from god sacrifice was needed to establish the relationship and make true worship possible let's stop there in the old testament sacrifices and offerings were an important part of worship for what so separate them from sin so that they can freely worship the lord okay what was that going to do it was going to first of all my sacrifice and offering has to be displayed so that my sin can be separated so that i can reestablish my relationship with the lord so that i am free to worship look at the pattern Sometimes when we come into gatherings, we tend to, to look and, f or should I say, feel that there's this type of hindrance happening in worship. And the reason why that's happening is because there is, or maybe there might be some type of sin that is in the body that is causing the, the people not to have that establishment with the Lord to cause them to lack in worship. So, or part two could be, what if there isn't any sin in the camp, but there is no establishment of relationship with the Lord, which again can hinder our worship with God. Now, 
That's Old Testament said we had to do a sacrifice so that we can come and establish our relationship with the Lord. But we no longer have to make a sacrifice because the ultimate sacrifice is Jesus Christ, which was already done at the cross where he paid the price so that our, our relationship would be established with God. Here's the thing, though. Jesus did the ultimate Thing. He did the ultimate breaking of the veil. The veil was torn in two and therefore gave us way to come and have this this um, amazing um, worship with God or amazing devotions with God or amazing relationship with God. Um, Jesus made the way. He became the truth and the light. And it's our part to walk that truth and light. It's our part to come in and walk out that relationship with the Lord. A lot of times people neglect their relationship with God, which leads them to a place where they cannot worship because they know they're not right with God. What does that mean? I'm not right with God. I have not been with the Father, but I'm only coming with the Father on corporate gatherings. God is not religion. And so, therefore, religion will expose itself in true relationships. What do I mean by that? That means that when you come into a corporate gathering and you can't feel the presence of God like everyone else, it's because you have bound yourself in a religious tradition that now is hindering you from coming into full worship with God. It has nothing to do with people. Our relationship with God is singular. It is between me and the Father, the Father and I, and the two of us will abide in in each other and that is where all these things come from okay because we have to break the lie it, it, it's not it's not it's not the church it's not who we're around it's our relationship with god that hinders everything in our life okay then it says the response of praise to god took several forms it took prayer it took praise and singing as individuals it took praise with musical instruments it took praise with dancing and that's all good that's all good can I tell you that that is all good but can I tell you it's not all good when you're not with the father so you can be doing all of this out of the form of religion and and be and not feel anything all of this will be all of this stuff can be done emotionally all of this stuff can be done without the spirit of god and that is what we need to come into to alignment this season is that all this stuff can display itself in the outward appearance but inside there's nothing that that is sustaining anything in you and so you know the scripture god reminded me of this morning was they worship me but their hearts are far from me. So all I'm getting is lip service. All this stuff can be a, a lip service to the Lord. It says, God makes it clear that he won't be satisfied with only the forms of worship. Sacrifices and music and dancing have no meaning apart from a heart and a life that is truly dedicated to the Lord. See what he's saying? I'm going to say it again. Sacrifices and music and dancing have no meaning a part of a heart and a life truly dedicated to the Lord. God's word to the prophet Micaiah clearly states the truth. Micaiah chapter 6 verse 6 and 8 says, With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings with calves a year old, will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn of my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has showed me, he has showed you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. What does the Lord require of you to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God? Mikhail's contempt for her husband David reveals her lack of true dedication. She was content to be a critical spectator 
rather than a true worshiper of God. Hold this for a moment. Her contempt from the window was just her moment right there at the window was, I just want to be with him. Not the moment of, I want to be in the presence with them. See how her mind was so wrapped up in... Her mind was so wrapped up in a humanistic thinking. When God should be the center of it all. Okay? I cannot continue to, to, to just... How can I say this where it's not offensive? The Bible makes it clear about marriage. Marriage is God-centered. Marriage is not me looking for a David, but it's me looking for the presence in man. This is where marriage has gone wrong. Why? Because we're looking at an outward appearance of the man. But is this man really in the in the presence of the Lord? Is his inward a reflection? Is the inward a reflection? A reflection of Jesus? Am I seeing the Jesus image? Am I seeing the image of Christ in them? Because that is God ordained. God ordained marriage is a man after God's heart. So therefore, he's not going to be looking for a wife. He's going to be focused on the things of God. Here you see that at this example, the woman was in love. She fell in love with David and then asked the father, can I get married? David wasn't looking for anything. He was too busy fighting the war. He was too busy trying to um, run after the, the heart of the father. Now listen, there's other parts in the Bible where you see David's failure as a human. And that's not, that's not what I'm focused on. I'm focused on the fact that this woman was lacking true devotion with the Lord. And that true devotion with the Lord would have led her to where she ended up at. So because she didn't have the true devotion of the Lord, we see how the story goes. Read it. True devotion of the Lord will get you God-centered. And all these these things that comes out of the presence of God, you know, the prayers, the um the uh what did it say? The prayers, the songs, the 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 the, the music that, that prophesies, the dancing, that all has to be spirit led. We've seen too much of this happening where Everyone's doing all of this, but you can see the spirit gives eyes to discern and you can see the emptiness of the emptiness of their soul. The spirit is longing to be with God. And that is what the Bible says that our spirit longs to seep out the deep things of God. So Micaiah's story is revealing her own lack, her own lack for true dedication. She was lacking that. And so there she became a spectator. A spectator is very religious. They sit in a church and they spectate the things of God. Always suspicious about something going down. And not engaged on what God is doing. So we have to be careful that we don't become spectators. And the only reason how you break the, the, the power of spectation is by what? Expectation. Expectation is what you receive from God. Expecting more of God. Expecting the Spirit of God to employ. But how is that going to be? How will you even know if you're not in true dedication with the Lord? If you're not in a true devotional lifestyle with the Lord, you'll miss it. Whenever anyone puts appearances or tradition or form above a true desire to worship God and Savior, we better be careful. Read the words of God to the prophet Micaiah, which are as true for us today as they were for the Israelites of that day. You know, the Old Testament is not to be disregarded. The Old Testament can speak to your life right now today. We've had, I've had 
numerous encounters in the books of Psalm where it fell right where I was and David spoke and I was able to rethink and reestablish my heart back to what the reality is and it's what God is who he says he is his promises are yes and amen and it brings me to another level of understanding in God centered thinking our thinking has to be God centered thinking start thinking with your God centered brain and not your um, human centered brain start getting in the realm of the spirit and start realizing that the realm of the spirit is before our our realm before we because why because heaven it comes down into earth so heaven is first and it brings it all the way down. Um, Paul says that first heaven is here, second heaven, and third heaven. That's great. But if we're first heaven, then third heaven should come down into us. Either way, the Bible makes it really clear that heaven should be brought down to earth. That heaven should be brought down to earth. So my mind must think in heavens before I can think about it in the earthly realm. So before we can make decisions in our life, we have to come to the Father and we have to ask the Lord for wisdom and understanding for the situation because I can easily destroy it like Micaiah did at that moment. Start screaming out, saying that you're a fool and thinking things are foolish because the human mind says it's foolish. But when God tells you to do something, it'll be the ultimate answer to your breakthrough. We have to get away from being led by emotions and be led by the Spirit of God. How is that going to happen? By making sure that you have an established relationship with God, that everything that will flow through it will be coming out of the Spirit of God. Jesus. We need more of Jesus. We need more of the Spirit. We need more of the Holy Spirit in us. We don't need so much more of man in us. We need more of the Spirit of God in us. And that was the reasoning why Jesus said that wait for the promise to come because the promise is the Holy Spirit. That is the promise that we are living out today. And we need to see more of the Holy Spirit now more than ever because it's not going to get brighter. It's going to get darker. And we need to have the light of Christ shining like never before. Here's some things that we can think about. Okay. And... 1 Samuel chapter 18 verse 20 and also 19 chapter 19 verse 11 to 17. I want you to think about what attracted her to David. Why did she fall in love with him? And how far she was willing to protect him. The second thing is out of 1 Samuel chapter 25 verse 43 to 44. And also 2 Samuel chapter 3 and 14. I want you to look at the events that were intervening, inter intervening the years that affected her feelings towards him. I know the Lord's listen, I, this is these are questions that you're probably thinking, what does it you'll see what the Lord will reveal. Because if you're going in with the help of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to reveal something. Remember, Jesus came out of the line of David. Jesus came out of the line of David. Okay? 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 12 and 16, and verse 20 to 23. I want you to describe in your own words what you think the scene of worship looked like. Then I want you to think, why did she act the way she did? Then I want you to ask yourself, how often do you merely just watch worship rather than participate in it? What needs to happen in order for you to become a participant instead of a spectator? The next question is, how often are you more concerned with the appearances and what can you do to change that? My next question is, what is David trying to tell Micaiah in verse 21 to 22? Do you think, do you think Mikael had any idea of the depth of love David had for God? And your last question is, how hard would it be for you to claim verse 22 as David does here? 
Do you think God wants this sort of submission from everyone? These are really good questions. I think we can go back and actually look at that. And I think that during the course of the week, let's dialogue. Let's start posting um, what you got out of that. What did you get out of reading those, going through those questions? And what did you get answers from it? And then let's just post our dialogue. And then it's nice to see what everyone else is getting. But you'll, the, the, the thing we'll see in it the most is what the Spirit is saying. Is what the Holy Spirit is saying. And so that is a little assignment from our Bible study. Digging deep. I will, to help out, I will post those, those questions on a PDF. That way, you don't have to go back to the video and have those questions to do the dialogue. I will post it on a PDF and you can go through it and come back and they're numbered. So all you have to do is number what you're answering to. And we could just chisel off of that. But get engaged. This is a page for women who are in ministry uh, the seven mountains, whatever you're tackling, family, you know, business, whatever it is that the Lord has you on, I want you to begin to utilize your gifts. I want you to begin to utilize um, what the Lord is giving you in word and, and begin to, to help other women come through. Maybe they're struggling with things and they're not saying anything. So we want to begin to do that. And I'm going to leave you with this. Old Testament, okay? Old Testament required a sacrifice. New Testament no longer requires a sacrifice. Why am I saying that? Because if you truly repent with all your heart, the Lord forgives. And you need to move on. If you have not truly repented with all your heart, you will keep repenting for something that you're not really sorry for. This is a season to begin to engage with God with all your heart and all your soul. I read a scripture the other says that the other day that says that God is longing for our soul to prosper. What does that mean? It's longing for the soul to finally overcome the barrier that holds them back from fully living out the spirit of God. Your spirit must be bigger than your soul. Your spirit must be bigger than your soul. And when the soul becomes submitted to the spirit, there's nothing that will become impossible in that scripture where nothing's impossible with God will be so real in your life. So we need to begin to plow into this, this junk and, and start cutting back some things that are found in us and, and, and just, just pick out those weeds because it's hindering our full walk with God. So, and God is longing to, to raise up kingdom women. Kingdom women are different. They know their identity. They pick up their sword. They slay the enemy. And they help restore the seven mountains of God. We are the help that restores the seven mountains of God. And so, you know, each side, each side was created for something. Man was created for one, woman was created for another, but women need to start using what they have because a lot of times we think we don't have enough or it's not our part to do it, but in reality it is. We have a part. We have a project that was given to us by God and we have to fulfill our project. And our project here is on earth. And so we need to do our earthly duties to build the kingdom of God as well. And so, that is our teaching for today. I will put up the PDF, and you can answer those questions, post them up, so we can dialogue, help one another out in the season. And then for the next Friday, we will have another woman in the Bible to go through. And I'm excited about that. We're going through the women's of the Bible. And we're going to pull out 
We're going to uproot and we're going to plant some things. Amen. So let's pray. Father, I just thank you, God, for this time. I thank you, Lord, for the time that you are ordaining, appointing for your women. And Lord, I ask that God that you would anoint their heads this season to come into another level with you, to have clean eyes to see, a pure water to drink from. And Father, that whatever is crooked, you are making straight. And Lord, whatever it is that you've predestined in their life, God, that you would begin to unravel and unleash in the seasons to come. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Love you guys. I will see you next Friday with our next study. And um, be encouraged. Be encouraged where it's a good time in the Lord. Amen.